Clay, and I am president of the League of Women Voters of Detroit. Uh, this form will be filmed for later viewing, so we ask that you turn off all of your cell phones and electronic devices. Uh, this form is for judicial candidates for Third Circuit Court and 36th District Court. So we definitely want to thank everyone for coming, as well as thanking the Detroit Public Library for use of the facility. We have league members in the audience with index cards for your questions. So uh, if you have questions, please, um, league members, can you identify yourself so that if you have questions, um, you can get a card. Our moderator this evening will be Rhonda Craig, and she will outline the format for the evening and introduce the candidates. So here's Rhonda. Good afternoon. The format for this forum has been established by the League of Women Voters of Detroit. The format was received by each candidate prior to the forum. I would like to introduce the League members that will be serving as producers, question sorters, timer, question gatherers, and greeters. The producer, as already introduced, is Suzanne Clay, the president of the League of Women Voters of Detroit. The question sorters are Sherry McLaughlin, Deborah Bunkley. Our question gatherers are John Krieger and Valerie Ash, Suzanne Antisdale. Timer is Gloria Davis. Greeters are Diana Warshaw, Christina Swanson, and Cheryl Buckle. The candidates for 36th District Court are Kalilia Yvette Davis and Richard Bauer. Are there any other candidates for 36? The other candidates for Third Circuit Court are Delicia Coleman, Ron Robinson, Robert Picano, Michelle Latorno McAvoy, Regina Thomas, Matthew M. Evans, Tracy Green, Denise Bryant Weeks, Wanda Evans, Melissa Cox, Brian Morrow, and Kelly Ann Ramsey. Okay. Ms. Craig, good evening. <laughs> this forum. It is uh, a benefit to all to give the candidates an opportunity, especially in light 
uh, this race being so uh, extremely large for the four open seats. My name is Delisha Taylor Coleman, and I'm a candidate for Third Circuit Court. I've been practicing law for over 21 years in circuit court in all of Wayne County, Macomb County, and other various metropolitan areas. In, practice, in my practice, I've been a criminal defense attorney. I've been an assistant city attorney prosecutor. I've represented individuals in family, both as plaintiffs and defendants, and civil, as a plaintiff's lawyer and as a defense attorney. I'm running for Wayne County Third Circuit Court because I want to take my knowledge and experience to the next level, and that is bringing to the bench integrity, respect, and a sense of fairness and justice. Where I repre represent individuals every day, and a lot of my uh, clients are young black men or individuals of lower income, I'm tired of seeing them being disrespected, not giving the same opportunities to have their fair say in court. I want to make a difference, and I believe that I can make that difference in bringing the integrity and respect to the court. Uh, I like to say morality, morality cannot be legislated, but behavior can be regulated. And I would like to bring that to Wayne County Third Circuit Court. Thank you. Mr. Ross. I'd also like to thank the League of Women Voters for giving us this opportunity to speak. Uh, my name is Ron Robinson. Uh, I'm an Assistant Attorney General for the State of Michigan. I've come to the um, I am a candidate for the Third Judicial Circuit. I bring with me 32 year, 32 plus years of legal experience as an attorney, uh, primarily in the civil rights area. I've been a civil rights attorney for over 32 years. Uh, during that period of time, I've uh, represented and uh, handled some very high profile cases, uh, uh, fighting for the rights of women to uh, full admission and uh, to so-called private clubs also fighting for equal pay, uh, for equal work for women. Uh, I've also uh, was the only attorney to argue against the constitutionality of Michigan's voter identification law before the Michigan Supreme Court. So I became an attorney because I wanted to uh, be a, an advantage to my community. I wanted to help my community. Uh, I think that uh, the role of a judge is to be fair and impartial. I believe that there's a sense within the community that the court systems don't work for everybody, uh, and that judges have lost touch with the communities that they serve, because that's who they serve. They serve the community. We don't serve ourselves. Uh, it's not about me. It's about the community and the people that, that I serve. Uh, I think that I would be a great candidate for 36th Judicial Circuit uh, because of my experience, my integrity, and uh, my, my sense that I work for you. And that's what I would bring to the bench. Thank you so much. Thank you and good evening. I also want to thank the uh, League of Women Voters for putting on this forum and I appreciate very, very much the opportunity. Uh, some of my own background, a lot of people know my uh, background of 32 years of uh, either serving as sheriff for 20 years or county executive is 12. But a lot of people don't know is some of my prior experience to that. I had worked for two uh, law firms uh, right out of law school, which was uh, Wilson, Darrell, and Raymond. Did a lot of uh, civil litigation, uh, bankruptcy, and uh, uh, cases uh, such as that. Also with the firm of Bocus, Jones, and Placus, uh, which we were the city attorneys for the city of Westland. Did a lot of what they call 312 arbitration, which is arbitration with the uh, fire and police uh, with the uh, municipality. Also served in the 18th District Court doing uh, misdemeanor uh, uh, prosecutions uh, for the uh, city of uh, Westland. Obviously, uh, from there, uh, public service for uh, 20 years as a sheriff, as I said, and 12 years as county executive. Since leaving my term, I've also uh, practiced law, but also teach now at Wayne County Community College, which includes uh, uh, constitutional law and uh, a lot of criminal justice uh, courses that uh, originally I was supposed to do one course. I'm averaging four courses now a semester teaching uh, with the youngsters, which has been uh, very, very rewarding. Uh, part of what uh, uh, my own background also is with uh, fairness and, and justice and looking for an opportunity to make sure that that uh, presents itself on the bench. Uh, I've had the aspect, and we know that some of the, some of the ele uh, elephant in the room is uh, some of the uh, concern there is with police officers as well as 
uh, other uh, issues that are on the street. I've had it from uh, both uh, sides in terms of being having been a sheriff, understanding uh, what the police officers and what they face, but also uh, realizing with some of my experience as county executive and uh, a lot of the uh, programs that I instituted uh, for those that are in the street as well. Thank you for the opportunity. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Michelle Eternal McAvoy, and I'm a candidate for Wayne County Circuit Court or Third Circuit. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for having me, and I'd like to thank all of you for coming out to learn more about the candidates. Um, I will tell you I have been licensed to practice law for 17 years. I grew up in Livonia. I'm a product of Livonia Public Schools. I currently reside in Plymouth. Uh, my children are products of the public schools in Plymouth. I went to University of Michigan Dearborn, where I obtained my Bachelor of Arts and then my law degree from Wayne State University. Um, unlike most people, I actually started representing uh, clients when I was still in law school. I started off working at the Legal Aid and Defender Association in the Civil Division, representing cl uh, clients who were low income and indigent, helping them protect their housing and defend against um, creditors who were coming after them from, for collections. I also helped students or children get Social Security benefits. After that, I eventually went into private practice. I opened up my own firm in 2003. I practiced in the fields of criminal law, family law. Uh, we did some bankruptcy. I ended up with three attorneys and five staff. Uh, in 2011, I was appointed by the Wayne County Circuit Court to serve as a referee at the front of the court. So every day I hear a circuit court docket. I preside over front of the court cases where I hear custody, child support, and parenting time matters. So I deal with our biggest assets in our community. I deal with our children. And children are very, very important to me. Families are important to me. As a referee, not only have I heard hearings regarding these issues, but I have also worked very hard to make the front of the court and the court in general more accessible to the public. And that's what I intend to do as a judge, to continue to work hard to try to make the public feel as if they have a good relationship with the court. I'm asking for your support, Michelle Letourneau McAvoy. Thank you. Hold on for a second. We're going to get another chair. We have another My name is Regina Thomas and I'm a candidate for Wayne County Third Circuit Court. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for having this forum and allowing me the opportunity to share with you why I want to become one of the next Wayne County Circuit Court judges. I've been an attorney for 20 years. I currently serve as the Deputy Chief Counsel for the Civil Law Group of Legal Aid and Defender Association where we provide essential civil legal services to low income people in our community. I also serve as an adjunct professor at Cooley Law School where I teach child abuse and neglect. My prior experience includes serving as an assistant prosecuting attorney for the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office, where I prosecuted gun violence in the city of Detroit and worked to provide resources for at-risk youth. I've also served as an assistant attorney general for the state of Michigan, where I represented the Department of Human Services and child protection proceedings. Over the course of the last 20 years, I've, I've seen how judges impact our daily lives. One of the things that I've noticed is that judges need to be fair. Judges need to be able to hear both sides of a case. They need to be balanced. Judges need to be able to show that they respect the litigants that come to the court as well as the people that come to do the business, which include the jurors. I'm interested in running because I want to provide fair, balanced access to justice to the courts. I've served over the last 20 years providing resources to at-risk children, reuniting families and children that are in abuse and neglect situations. This actually is my life's dream. I decided to become a judge when I was 11 years old. I'm not saying that I knew then what I know now, but what I do know is that we need judges now that are fair, balanced, and provide access to justice. Regina Thomas for Wayne County Third Circuit Court. Davis? Yes, thank you. My name is Kalilia Davis. I am running for 36th District Court Judge. I'm running for one of the two open seats. I've been practicing law for nine years. Although the majority of my practice is criminal defense, I do also handle um, probate matters, where I handle conservatorships, guardianships. 
I serve as guardian at Vitam, and I perform guardianship reviews and represent people in involuntary mental health commitment cases. At juvenile court, I represent parents accused of abuse and neglect and juveniles accused of delinquent behavior. And I also am one of only two candidates in my race who have regular experience at 36th District Court, where the vast majority of cases are traffic matters, and I serve as house counsel on a regular basis at 36th District Court. So I have experience in a multiple area of practices, but also specifically at 36th District Court, where I work on a regular basis and I also handle preliminary examinations, which are conducted and presided over by judges at 36th District Court. One of the major reasons why I'd like to become a judge is because we know that we have a right to a jury of our peers, but it's very rare that we have a jurist of our peers, meaning a judge who is like us and very similar and regular, um, as many people are who live a very regular experience. And I am a native Detroiter. I was born, raised, and still live on Detroit's Lower East Side. I went to Detroit Public Schools, graduated from Cass Tech, went to the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor, and I got my law degree from Wayne State University Law School. Again, my name is Kalilia, K-A-H-L-I-L-I-A, Yvette Davis, and I'm running for 36th District Court Judge. Thank you very much. Thank you, and my name's Matthew Evans, and I again would like to echo my thanks for the League of Women Voters for putting this together, and for those people who have come to show up and listen to a bunch of lawyers talk for a while. Um, I've been, uh, a little, my background is I grew up downriver, I grew up in Riverview, my parents were Detroit public school teachers. Uh, I did my undergraduate at Western Michigan University, and my undergraduate degree is in accounting. And so for the first 15 years of my professional career, I was an accountant. I had a fair amount of success uh, and went through progressively uh, higher and higher uh, positions in business. My last, I was uh, Michigan National Bank's uh, controller of their mortgage company, which at the time was the sixth largest in the United States. Uh, at that point, when I was at the bank, my wife and I came to the conclusion that this was not the way I wanted to live my life that I wanted to serve people, not just to make money. So we made a decision that I was gonna to go to law school. So I went to law school at night, and uh, I graduated cum laude from Michigan State University. And for the last 20 years, I've spent the bulk of my work representing indigent criminal defendants here in Wayne County. Uh, I've been very active in the Bar Association, and my colleagues have asked me, uh, first of all, they uh, elected me to be president of the Criminal Defense Bar Association, and I was president for six years. I've been asked by the Bar Association also to go to Lansing and to uh, testify on their behalf uh, for the various criminal defense and indigent defense measures that have come up. Uh, I tried more than 200 cases here in Wayne County Circuit Court, and uh, with over 25 of those being homicide cases. I believe that I'm probably one of the most experienced here at the trial level, and especially where these seats will be, primarily will be in the criminal division. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Richard Bowers. I'm running for 36th District Court for one of the two open seats of non-incumbents. Um, I grew up in the South and came to Michigan about 17 years ago to go to law school and have been here ever since and lived in the city of Detroit for many years. Now, over those years of being an attorney, I've practiced law in a lot of different areas. I've worked for four different mayoral administrations, uh, staff attorney to three different city council members, the head of the city department, and I'm a hearing officer for the building safety, engineering, and environmental department currently, uh, where I conduct show cause hearings for zoning and business license issues. So over the, the past 10 plus years, I've had a lot of well-rounded experience in the city of Detroit in all kinds of different uh, types of law. And I'm running for, for judge because I think that the 36th District Court needs a fresh face, a fair face, and I will be as fair and open to everyone that comes to that court. And. Um, I ask you for your vote. Thank you very much. 
Good evening, and thank you, League of Women Voters, for allowing me this opportunity, and to all of you for coming tonight and giving me this opportunity to share with you why I am a candidate for Third Circuit Court Judge. I'm Tracy Green. I am the youngest of four children born to Sarah and Sheridan Martin, who are still alive and well in their 90th and 88th years, respectively. I am a lifelong Detroiter, and I share that my parents taught me the value of hard work, integrity, and the importance of contributing to my community. They did that by example. My father worked at Ford as a UAW member for more than 50 years. My mother was an activist in the UAW. So I watched by their example as they provided me the opportunity to see how activism and contribution to the community and integrity and hard work should be displayed. I fast forward to today and tell you that I am the past uh, legal director of an organization called Detroit Center for Family Advocacy. It, for seven years, was an organization that provided support to families who were losing their children. 30 seconds remaining. Thank you. I am a lifelong Detroiter. I am a mother, a wife, a grandmother of seven, and I've been practicing for 20 years. I believe that all of these qualities make me a very good candidate for Third Circuit Court, and I look forward to talking more about my <coughs> qualifications. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Lenise Bryant Weeks, and I want to thank also the League of Women Voters for this opportunity, and I thank you for your time and attention this evening. I am currently a judge at 36th District Court. I have been a judge for eight years. I was appointed in 2007 by Honorable Jennifer Granholm, and I have been twice elected by the citizens of the city of Detroit. I too am running for one of the four vacancies on the Wayne County Third Circuit Court. I have 25 years of experience, eight years of judicial experience. I have been practicing law for 25 years. I have practiced civil law and criminal law. Um, currently, I serve as the presiding judge of the Traffic and Criminal Division. That is the largest division at the 36th District Court. We currently have 12 judges assigned to the, to the division. Normally, we have 14 judges assigned, but we do have two vacancies at the court. I am also the auxiliary judge, and that means that I am currently the only judge at the 36th District Court that handles all of the dockets that the court has. So I handle landlord-tenant cases, traffic and ordinance cases, domestic violence cases, criminal misdemeanors, and our felony cases before they get to the circuit court. I believe that I am well qualified to sit as a judge on the circuit court, and I most definitely am asking for your support on August the 2nd, and I look forward to answering any questions that you may have of me this evening. Thank you for your time. Good evening, and thank you to the League of Women Voters for allowing me to be here today. My colleague, um, Judge Ryan Weeks, left 30 seconds, to, so do I get her 30 seconds? <laughs> <laughs> I'm also a judge at Wayne County um, 36th District Court, and I'm running for one of the four vacant seats at the Wayne County 3rd Circuit Court. There are 21 candidates running, and I'm just one of the ones, and I'm asking for your vote on August the 2nd. I thank you in advance for electing me as your judge at 36th District Court. I made a promise then, and I'll make a promise again, and that is to listen to each and every person that comes into my courtroom, and to make a decision that's based on the law, and that is fair. Now, somebody will win and somebody will lose, but at least you will walk away knowing that Judge Evans heard what you had to say. You had your day in court. I also was born and raised in the city of Detroit, and I am a proud product of Detroit Public Schools. I went to Cordes Elementary, White Elementary, Noble, and Cass Tech. I went to Eastern Michigan University, where I got a master of uh, BSW, and I went to Wayne State, where I got a master's in social work. 
I was a social worker for 15 years before I went to law school while working at Wayne County Juvenile Court. And then I decided to run for judge. After 17 years working as a private practicing attorney representing indigent clients, many of the clients at the juvenile level, and I also represented the mother who had the 12 hour standoff with the police who refused to give her child over to the Department of Human Services because they wanted her to give the child psychotropic medication. I am Judge Wanda Evans. I'm asking for your vote so I can continue to represent as a judge all of the citizens of Wayne County. Um, Wayne County. Remember my name, Wanda Evans, Wanda Evans, Wanda Evans. Thank you. Good evening, and again, thank you for having us today and bringing some awareness to our judicial race. It's a very, very important race and often neglected by voters in their education process, so thank you for having us tonight. Uh, my name is Melissa Cox. I'm running for one of the open seats on the Third Circuit Court. I've been practicing law at the law uh, firm of Fasson and Bond for the last eight years. I've worked there for the last 10 years. I also began representing clients when I was in law school as an asylum attorney. Uh, I now work uh, as a family law attorney primarily and also municipal law attorney. I represent the uh, municipalities of Wayne and Westland, um, anything from their criminal uh, prosecution of misdemeanors to their civil um, litigation matters down in the Wayne County Circuit Court. <coughs> I've been their city attorney for the past seven years and uh, the city attorney for the city of Wayne for the past five years. Uh, also in that time frame, I've um, become mom to three children who are my bis biggest inspiration, um, give me the biggest perspective in my career, they make me a better attorney every day, um, and they are a large part of the reason that I am in this race running uh, for one of your uh, open seats on the Wayne County Circuit Court. I look forward to engaging with you today and answering any of the questions that you have, so thank you. Well, my name is Brian Morrow, and just to give you a little bit of a background on this race, uh, there are four open seats, and the reason there's four open seats is because there are four judges that have aged out. They've turned 70 or, or older, and they can't run for their seats. Um, there are 21 candidates that will be on the ballot, although there's only 12 candidates from our race here tonight. Um, I just wanted to give you a sense of what you're going to see when you look at the ballot. Uh, my name is Brian Morrow. I have been an attorney for 30 years. I started out as an environmental attorney for the first 12 years or so of my career. I then became a criminal defense attorney, worked my way up from doing minor misdemeanors, uh, uh, low-level felonies, to capital cases, uh, carjackings, armed robberies, um, homicide cases. Uh, about 12 years ago, uh, Prosecutor Kim Worthy asked me if I would become the Deputy Chief of the Juvenile Division within the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. So for the last 12 years, that's where I have been, uh, the Deputy Chief of the Juvenile Division for the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. Uh, we get anywhere between three to 5,000 new delinquency cases within our division every year. Those cases range anywhere from school truancy, uh, shoplifting on the low end to homicide, carjacking, armed robbery on the high end. Uh, I also developed a teen court diversion Very program safe. for juveniles, for first time offenders, for low level misdemeanors. Uh, because of that program, I was named a champion of justice by the State Bar of Michigan, which is an award that goes to only five attorneys across the state. I also teach criminal law at Eastern Michigan University. And I should also say too, uh, to echo other comments, uh, all four of these seats will probably be on the criminal division, and I have the criminal experience both as a defense attorney and as a prosecutor. So, thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kelly Ann Ramsey, and I would first like to thank the League of Women Voters for uh, putting together this forum. I'd like to thank those of you in the audience for taking time to come out here this evening, and I'd like to thank those listeners online for taking the time to know who your judges are. Because who's making the decisions in our community regarding the residents of our community is very important. We need judges on the bench who will take the time to know the cases and the facts before them and to give everybody an opportunity to speak in that courtroom. They need to make the right decisions for the hard reasons. 
To tell you a little bit about me, ladies and gentlemen, I was born and raised in the city of Detroit. I'm the proud daughter of a Detroit police officer, and I have an interesting childhood in history which brings me here today. Sadly, I lost my mother when I was little. So what does a Detroit police officer do with a terminally ill wife and a nine-year-old little girl? That was me. He can no longer work the normal police hours from midnight till eight in the morning, eight to four, and four to midnight. So at that time, my father took a transfer to what was then Recorder's Court, servicing the criminal jurisdiction for Detroit. It's now in the same building called Frank Murphy Hall of Justice. And back in those days, when I grew up at 18210 Rutherford in the city of Detroit, the Detroit police officers in uniform could drive the bus, ride the bus for free. And I went to work with my father. That's how I spent my summers. It was there that I learned how the law shapes a community. I graduated from University of Michigan Dearborn, Wayne State Law School. I dreamt about being a prosecutor. I spent my first six years as a lawyer at the prosecutor's office. I did very high press work for them concerning our children and disabled adults. I spent the next 24 years on the bench at the Wayne County Juvenile Court, taking care of our abused and neglected and delinquent children. I now work for the Office of the Attorney General. Thank you. Uh, good evening, League of Women Voters. My name is Christopher Blount. Thank you for putting on this Forum, thank you for choosing this venue and supporting the Detroit Public Library. I'm one of your candidates for judge of 36th District Court, and I want to let you know it would be my honor, privilege, and pleasure to be your next judge of 36th District Court. Give you a little bit of background about myself. I'm born and raised on the west side of the city. Uh, I'm a Mumford High School graduate, and just to let you know, the Dexter 16 was the bus that I caught to Mumford High School going west, and when I started to attend Wayne State University, the Dexter 16 was the same bus I caught coming east to drop me off right here at Cass Avenue. I was fortunate enough to have parents to support me while I received a Bachelor of Fine Art from Wayne State University, a Juris Doctor from Wayne State University, and also a Master of Urban Planning from Wayne State University. I've been practicing law since 2007. It's a, it's a practice that takes me to 36th District Court quite often. Now, your landlord tenant, 36th District Court for the City of Detroit. Small claims for the City of Detroit, 36th District. Felonies originate there. Misdemeanors will stay there. Uh, my attitude is that if I'm fortunate enough to have your vote and be your next judge, that when you come before Christopher Blount, you're going to be treated with respect. Your dignity is going to be intact. And I think one of these other candidates said, hey, in court, you're going to have winners and losers. But even if the loser says, Judge Blount treated me with respect. He heard me, he let me plead my case, and even though he didn't do what I wanted him to do, he was fair with me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the courts are the third branch of government, and just like the other branch, government is meant to serve the people, and the judges are your principal actors in that branch, and that's not lost on me. When you get elected to office, no matter what it is, it's not about who you be, it's about what you can do. Christopher Blount, for 36th District Court Judge. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you to the, the League of Women Voters for having us here tonight. Um, I am uh, James Humphreys. I am one of the many candidates running for Wayne County Circuit Court for one of the four empty or vacant positions that exist. Uh, I'm a son of Detroit, born and raised on the west side, in the area of Livinois and Tarn. Went to Chatsey High School, graduated from Chatsey, went on to University of Michigan, where I spent four years, and during those four years, had the great opportunity of playing football for the legendary Bo Schembecker. I then crossed the street, State Street, went to the law school, graduated from law school, came back home. I started negotiating, mediating, and, and making decisions in terms of which side is right or wrong um, when I became the seventh son of my mother and father um, as a seventh son. And if you are anything about families that have 13 children in them, that's a pretty important position being seven because there's six above you and six below, and you gotta sort of juggle it real nice. Uh, my mother, in fact, is here sitting in the row with my oldest daughter 
Um, I um, also then became um, a husband and had to be the negotiator and arbitrator in the midst of the discussions that occurred in my family of three, three daughters and a son. Um, I have 30 years experience in the Wayne County Circuit Court, both the criminal, or the criminal division, the civil division, as well as the domestic uh, family division. Uh, I'm running because families are under attack, and I want to make sure that the families in this county are protected, taken care of, and looked after when they come into the court to handle the business that they need to take care of. Remember, James Humphreys for judge. Thank you. find themselves there. I think it's important we are electing a judge to that court to have someone who's connected to the community. I've, I've spent my entire legal career at the Legal Aid and Defenders Association as deputy defender. I've spent 15 years defending um, the rights of the indigent defendants. In that capacity, I've tried many felony matters um, through trial, pretrial, and pleas. In addition to my service at the Legal Aid and Defenders Association, I also serve as a member of the Human Rights Commission, appointed by Mayor Mike Duggan. I am a hearing panelist for the Attorney Discipline Commission. What that means is I make sure that lawyers who are faced with allegations of misconduct or grievances are heard, and then, and then as a body we meet and decide whether or not um, there's, there has been disciplinary violations. I was raised on the west side of Detroit. I'm a graduate of Henry Ford High School. I attended um, Hampton University in, in Virginia, and I um, graduated from Cooley Law School. I was raised by a, my, a single mother, um, and that, that experience, um, being raised by my mother, helped me understand and appreciate 30 seconds remain. Understand and appreciate um, the need to be connected to the community. I like to tell people that I started working at an early age, since 12 years old, I was a paper girl. And I would be honored to serve the community, to continue my service um, of the community as a judge at 36th District Court. I'm Christine Longstreet. And I like to say the road to justice starts with Longstreet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. as a judge is fairness, integrity, and respect. Respect of the law, respect of the participants in the judicial process. Having the understanding and the knowledge of law and the experience to utilize that knowledge along with your integrity and respect, giving justice, giving true justice um, a face, a feeling, an understanding. Uh, these are the things that I feel are one of the most important or the most important things as a judge. Upholding the Constitution and not being partial. Not representing anyone's agenda, whether it's your own or your supporters or your contributors or anybody else. But giving justice, not just us, a face. I also think that fairness, equality, and integrity are the uh, hallmarks of a, of a good judge. Not only a good judge, but a great judge. Uh, you shouldn't have to lose your dignity when you go in front of a, front of a court. Uh, judges should treat you with, res with respect. Uh, by the same token, judges should be con connected to their community. You shouldn't see a judge just on election time. They should be active in the community, mentoring our youth. Uh, when I. Uh, first, I, I never wanted to be a lawyer, but I wanted to be a dentist. 
uh, because I saw in my community the African American doctor who was who was who was who was uh, very instrumental. And if, if youth can see it, they can they can achieve it. So I would bring that sense of community and and, and also assisting the youth that are coming up uh, with any of my uh, with my my position on the bench. Thank you very much, Ron Robinson, the third judicial circuit. Yes, to echo uh, fairness and balance, and uh, to realize that uh, someone, especially if they're charged with a crime or even a civil matter, they're many times overwhelmed uh, by the system uh, when they're coming in. They feel many times that the deck is probably stacked against them because they're not familiar with the system. And uh, part of what the judge should do is to make sure that there's a sense of balance but also fairness, but also feel that there's respect to that individual, whether it's a defendant or uh, someone that may be a plaintiff or a, a defendant uh, that's uh, in the case. I have, uh, I have uh, sat through numerous town hall meetings and other community meetings, labor meetings, everything else through the 32 years uh, that I was uh, either a sheriff or county executive. And one of the things that's important is to be connected to the community and to realize uh, what the pulse of the street is as well. Because many times uh, people are sitting just in their ivory tower and not realizing what the community is feeling many times leads to many bad decisions. Uh, thank you. Um, you know, I, I echo the statements of the uh, candidates who have spoken before me. One of the most important things to remember is that your job as a judge is to be fair and to respect the law and to enforce the law and not make it. One of the other things that you have to understand, and I know this from serving on the bench for the past five years, is that you take people as they walk into your courtroom, and you don't know what their background is, and you don't know what their experiences are. And oftentimes they are intimidated, and they're afraid, and they're especially intimidated if the other party has an attorney, and they don't. And sometimes people, while they appear as if they may want to fight, they don't. They just want to get their word out, and they just want somebody to hear them. I'm also a certified mediator, and a judge has to understand that sometimes, once people say what they need to say and you hear them, it's easy to resolve their matters without litigation and without rising to that level of fighting, especially in family court and especially on the civil docket. Thank you. In addition to what's already been said, I would say that access to our courts is, is a paramount concern. I believe that when someone comes to the court, they should have an opportunity to be heard, and they should be able to have an opportunity to participate in their legal matter in a meaningful way. As we know, on the criminal side, if you do not have the uh, money to, to pay for an attorney, one is appointed for you. On the civil side, there is no law that requires that. What I would like to see happen uh, in terms of being a judge is that a judge is able to work in the legal community to provide the resources to civil litigants so that they are able to participate in a meaningful way in their, in their legal matter. Hi, I'm Kalilia Davis, and I certainly would say that fairness um, is an integral part of being a judge and providing justice. Not only fairness to the parties when you have civil litigants, but also to um, defendants and police officers equally. I think that it's important that we don't give too much credence, more credence to one person because of their profession than we do another person who comes before us. I also think that another important thing that a judge has to have is compassion. I think that you have to have compassion for the people who appear before you so that you can understand the circumstances that they are facing. And I think that all of those things can combine to create a just judge who is able to provide justice. And we have to have the wisdom of Solomon when we are creating justice and giving justice to people so that we can craft something that is, is fair and equitable and right to both people who are in front of us. Thank you. Kalilia Davis. Could you repeat the question, please? Yes. What are the most important issues you must face, or you must address as a judge? Well, I think the, the, the most important uh, issues that you're going to have to address as a judge is you need to understand the docket and you understand the body of law that you are expected to be not just competent in, you're expected to be an expert in. <clears throat> and that's by doing what I call the scholarship part of being a judge. The next part is to get a hold of your docket and to understand that you need to be able to efficiently move cases. Now that doesn't mean that it, you run it through like a railroad, but it means that you have that to be sense. able to 
uh, work hard enough and keep both parties focused to reach the end. And the most important thing is that, you know, there's the law and there's justice, okay? The judge has goal is to seek justice, okay? And by being competent at the law, you will get justice. Matthew Evans. Hello, Richard Bowers for 36 District Court. I echo many of the things that my colleagues have said already. Um, I think I will add one thing uh, is one of the most important issues in the court is to make sure that you pay attention to detail in each case because the law is the law. A lot of cases come in and out with similar charges maybe, but the, the details and nuances of the facts are very, very important as well as treating everyone fairly and, and being respectful and, and also making sure that Everyone is respectful in your courtroom to everyone else. Thank you. Tracy Green for Third Circuit Court. I believe that one of the most important issues confronting the court today is the lack of confidence that our public has in the judiciary. And whether it's for a warranted reason or a perception, our public and I'm a member of the public, so I'm aware of the perception, does not have confidence in the judiciary. I believe that a simple way of addressing it, or at least beginning to make a contribution towards addressing it, is ensuring that no matter the outcome, everyone who leaves the courtroom believes that he or she has had his day in court, that he or she has been treated with respect, that fairness has been a part of the process and that he or, sh he or sh his or hers dignity has been upheld. Tracy Green. Of course, um, Lenise Bryant Weeks for Circuit Court, there are a, a lot of issues that face our court system. Um, 36th District Court is the busiest court in the state and um, one of the busiest courts in the country and as well as Third Circuit Court. So one of the things that I would focus on, one of the issues, would be docket management. It's um, easy to say or um, to look at, I have to be fair, I have to be just. How do I do that? I have to learn how to manage a busy docket to make sure that people don't feel like they're just being herded through, that a way to maintain their dignity is to say your case is important, we're not um, giving you a wide brush. We are managing dockets by, while maintaining your right to a speedy trial. And so I think docket management and along with fairness and justice are important issues to address on the circuit court. Thank you. Judge Wanda Evans for Wayne County Third Circuit Court. One of the issues, and there are many issues that a judge has to deal with, is the, the person standing in front of you, giving them an opportunity to tell their story. So listening is very important without interrupting, but sometimes you may have to guide them so that you can get to the bottom line of what they're trying to say, but do it with respect and dignity. And once you've listened and you've heard their story, then you can make decisions that's fair and just. I would, agree, I would agree with my colleague that docket management is important. And I've been on all the dockets at 36 District Court. It is one of the busiest dockets and courts in the state of Michigan. And you have to manage it well by being prepared, coming to the bench on time, and doing your homework. And don't leave cases on your desk day after day. Get the work done. And that's what I do. Judge Wanda Evans. I think one of the uh, biggest issues before the judiciary is to achieve the understanding that the courts are there to serve the public. They're not there to serve the attorneys. They're not always there to serve the litigants. They're there to serve uh, the public and to do what is in the best interest of the public. An example of this in the family division, it's not always what's best uh, for the litigants before you. It is oftentimes um, and arguably all the time what is best for the people that are not in the room and those are the children of these families, the children of the litigants. 
So uh, judges often, um, I feel, you know, have a desire to please the people who are in their courtroom, and that's not always the case. So while uh, fairness is very important, uh, the road to that fairness is, is this basic understanding and the balance of having um, that fairness with firmness as well is also very important. Thank you. In order for all of the candidates to get on the ballot, we had to get 4,000 signatures from registered voters. Uh, and I will say to you that I got almost six or almost 7,000 registered voters to sign my petition and I got almost all of those petition signatures myself, personally. In the course of talking to probably close to 9,000 individuals, uh, I heard from a number of them that, uh, first of all, that there's way too many people that are incarcerated in this country. Way too many people have felony records in this country. And I think as a judge, you need to be cognizant of that. And one of the ways I think you address that is by focusing on treatment courts as opposed to the more traditional courts. Uh, I'm speaking about mental health courts, veterans courts, drug courts, even homeless courts. Uh, those are opportunities for people to get treatment ahead of uh, actually spending time in prison and spending uh, tax dollars incarcerating and housing people. The second issue that I've heard from voters after voter is they need to know more about the, the court system itself. Thank you again. My name is Kellyanne Ramsey and I'm running for one of the four open seats on the Third Circuit Court. I stand before you with 24 years of experience as a referee in the juvenile division of the Third Circuit Court. In that position, I have handled tens of thousands of cases. I have shown to the community that I can manage an incredibly busy docket by being to work on time, knowledgeable, doing my homework on the cases before I hit the bench, and staying late to make sure that the orders are done on time. I have also proven to you that I care about the community. And because I care about this community, I work hard for this community. And I would welcome each and every one of you to call the intake department at the Wayne County Juvenile Court Division and ask for the supervisor of that department. And she will tell you that for years, parents have come into that courtroom and asked and begged and pleaded for their children to be on my docket. I care about this community and I will Stop. work hard for you. Thank you. Hello again, Christopher Blount for 36th District Court Judge. I'm gonna kind of put a lot of what everyone just said, at least for me, you can charge it to me, kind of in a nutshell. And the issue is every day as your judge is, am I doing my job? How many times in this world have we wanted someone, you said to yourself, just do your job. Just do your job. And that should still apply to anyone else who you put in office. Now sometimes just doing your job is making sure that your docket is managed correctly and appropriately because if your courtroom is out of order, you can't really find justice for anyone if papers are flying all over the place. And sometimes doing your job means you identify a young man or a young woman as someone who deserves a second chance and an opportunity to earn redemption with the community. And sometimes you have to be unrelenting that protecting the community is priority one. Christopher Blount for 36 District Court. The issues that I see um, as a person that wants to be a judge are as follows. In the state of affairs that we currently have, people do not have the confidence in the judiciary. And it, it starts with what happens in the street and then ends up in the courts. And so one of the major things that I would be working for is to reestablish the confidence that people have in the judicial portion of our system. In addition, trust and respect, as, as some of the other people have said, are important. Next, the reestablishing uh, an efficient and effective way to manage the docket that you have in front of you. No matter what, of, what division you might be in, you have to manage that docket. And you have to make sure that people are comfortable and confident that when they come before you, that you're going to be on time, you're going to know what's going on, and you're going to treat them with the dignity and respect that they need. Thank you. So one of the most important um, issues facing judges, especially at 36th District Court, probably would be 
the number of people that the court has to service. So it's incumbent upon judges to be on time, to be prepared, and to be orderly. A second issue would be sometimes justice is ruling against a person. And when you make a ruling, you know that when that person walks out your courtroom, your ruling may impact their lives in ways that you don't necessarily feel, feel it's just and fair. But as a judge, you must follow what the law says. So it is, it is tough to make decisions that hurt people, but in, in that vein, if you are connected to your community and you're, and you're participating or helping push other programs, I think that that will um, alleviate some of the problems associated with um, the court. Thank you. Question two, and we'll start with Mr. Robinson. What is your opinion of racial profiling? That's a great, that's a good question. Uh, Ron Robinson for Third Judicial Circuit. Racial profiling is using stereotypes, uh, use, usually used by the police in order to arrest or stop uh, a person. Uh, it does not, uh, usually when you're a uh, good police work, they use probable cause that, that, that a crime has been committed. Uh, but when they fail to use probable cause, they use their own biases and race, uh, uh, biases to, to make uh, arrests and detain people. That's what racial profiling is. Uh, it's not based on whether or not this person has committed a crime, but on their individual prejudice uh, against a particular race or uh, national origin or, or, or culture. That's what racial profiling is. Yes, this is an issue that came up when I was uh, a sheriff and we addressed it uh, head on. Number one, what we did is uh, we had the deputies and we uh, actually profiled all the stops that they made. And uh, we looked for uh, any type of uh, racial stops that looked like they were making. Obviously, if they were patrolling in Highland Park, the odds were higher that they were going to stop somebody that was an African American. But if the high number also carried over to Heinz Park in Northville or in Plymouth Township, we realized that we're starting to deal with the problem. Instead of waiting for a complaint, we tracked uh, all of these uh, particular stops. Uh, if we thought that there was an issue that was starting to come up with that officer, we immediately put him into training and started to deal with the issue. Sometimes you can't change necessarily uh, their attitude, but you can change their behavior, and, and that's what we we're aiming for. I also did the same with, uh, we refused to do racial profiling when we were working with the uh, DEA out at Detroit Metropolitan Airport. Uh, we said we were not going to participate in that particular uh, type of uh, stops. We would do it with probable cause and uh, with other type of techniques. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, my opinion is it should not be tolerated. Racial po profiling should not be tolerated. Um, you see it in the African American community. You see it in the Arabic community, and it comes from it, it comes from a fear in the community. Uh, and it's it's a matter of training, training the officers properly frankly training the courts and the people who are there to administer justice properly so that they can recognize when racial profiling exists. And so it is, uh, it's, the justice system is supposed to be blind and we Four are, seconds. that doesn't only apply to judges, it applies to everybody who is there to protect and serve the community. And so it's not something that should be tolerated. It's a matter of training and if the training doesn't work, then it's a matter of discipline. Thank you. Michelle Eterno McAvoy. Regina Thomas, candidate for Wayne County Third Circuit Court. Uh, we're all aware that racial profiling does exist. Uh, as was already indicated, it is, it's wrong. It should not be tolerated. Uh, as a judge and in the context of the criminal justice system and, and cases, a judge should be able to be aware um, of how racial profiling can be used in a case against a defendant and should be able to make proper rulings if motions are raised as to the um, legitimacy of evidence that's presented in the court. So I would say that in terms of uh, judges and, and what we're supposed to do, we should be knowledgeable of the law, we should also be trained, and we should be fully aware that racial profiling does exist, and we should be able to address that in the court as it relates to motions and evidence before the court in the context of criminal justice cases. Kalilia Davis for 36th District Court. Um, I definitely believe that racial profiling is wrong. And I think that the police should be trained as to how to stop people for legitimate things and not just creating things based upon a person's appearance or their race or cultural background because I believe that there are also 
a lot of stops of Arabs and Latinos based on just their, their race or cultural background. And it's not just a, thank you, it's not just an issue of black people being racially profiled. I think that it stems from a long history of defining minorities as other. And you know, I, I just think that it's a, a bad thing that we need to figure out ways to stop and make people more culturally sensitive and aware that just because a person is of a particular background does not make them more likely to be committing a crime. Kalilia Davis for 36 years. Uh, uh, Matthew Evans for Third Circuit Court. Um, of course, racial profiling is wrong. But what we're seeing a trend now, and I've seen this uh, trend in the last five years, with the increase in technology in police cars, what happens is this, and I've had this happen to more clients, they get, the police get behind them. Maybe they're black, maybe they're young, but they run their plates. But they don't just get the information of who this, this car belongs to, they find out who it belongs to, do they have a criminal record, and, that, and now that begins the next stop, okay? Because we're gonna find some stupid reason to pull them over, because there's something hanging from his mirror, because it tints too much on the windows. Some reason to stop that person, or they have a medical marijuana car, okay? This is a bigger problem than just racial profiling. This is a problem that we have with privacy and law enforcement. Matthew Evans. Mr. Bowers. Richard Bowers, uh, candidate for 36th District Court. So just to, just to ask you, Ms. Craig, the question is, what is racial profiling? I'm sorry, I will, I will state the question. What is your opinion of racial okay. profiling? Racial profiling to me is when you assume that someone has broken the law just based upon the way they look. And it happens most often, uh, unfortunately, with traffic stops and that kind of thing. I was fortunate enough to, in, in 2007, to draft Detroit's first anti-profiling ordinance when I worked for Detroit City Council President Ken Cockrell Jr. It was the first one of its kind and it made a big difference in lots of parts of the city, particularly Southwest Detroit. I'm very much against racial profiling, and it's something that unfortunately still exists today. It needs to be dealt with in a, in a more efficient manner from uh, law enforcement. Thank you. Tracy Green for Third Circuit Court. Obviously, I abhor racial profiling. It's wrong. That's already been said a number of times. But I don't think that it's just a matter of cultural sensitivity. I think that it's also a matter of lazy investigation. And that's a supervisory issue in many instances. And it's not a, an issue that rears its ugly head just in the criminal context. Over my 20 years of practice, I've seen it not just in criminal cases, but also in child abuse and neglect cases. People who are poor, and of course minorities are disproportionately poor, tend to have a lot more attention from law enforcement or from CPS officials, etc. It's wrong, it's unconstitutional, and as a judge, I would have a very keen eye to look out for it and ensure that it doesn't become a part of the process of any of my cases. Tracy Green. Judge Brian Weeks for Circuit Court, and again, of course, I um, would abhor and detest racial profiling because um, it singles out a group of individuals not based on anything except the color of their skin and um, or their you know where they where they grew up. Or um, so, of course, that's not something that we want to see in our law enforcement, and it's not something that we want to see from the bench. As judges, we have to make sure that we are keen to those types of issues and that we ourselves put aside our own biases and prejudice when it comes to the defendants that are before us or the litigants that are before us. Justice is blind. Lady Justice doesn't know the racial uh, ethnicity of the person that stands before her. She looks at the issues. And so as jurors, we have to make sure that we don't tolerate it in our courtroom, that we're not afraid to throw out evidence if we believe that the reason for the stop was pretextual. So uh, Judge Brian Weeks for Sir Third Circuit Court. 
Hello, Judge Wanda Evans. As everyone has said, um, racial profiling is wrong. Uh, my colleague, colleague said something um, important that as a jurist, we need to be listening to the evidence that's being presented and be brave enough to uh, ask follow-up questions that a, an attorney may ask to the police officer so that we can get to the, the truth of the matter. And we are truth seekers. And if we, I determine that testimony comes out and it's truly racial profiling, then as a judge, I need to be aware of that because I'm listening and I need to make my decision with that in mind, that it's wrong and that it's not going to be tolerated. And it's a way to present that as a judge when you see it in your courtroom. And if you get the reputation <coughs> that some things are not allowed in your courtroom, they'll be very careful, careful to bring a case to you in trial and that, and that. <laughs> Yes, very clearly the elected judges need to be ignorant to race and also class and also culture when it relates to um, the people before them in making decisions. But more importantly, they need to be able to recognize, recognize when profiling is happening and it doesn't just happen in our criminal justice system. It pervades every uh, tenant of our legal system uh, and it happens in family cases and CPS cases and general civil cases as well as our criminal cases. Uh, and so to say that it's bad and wrong is of course important and to say you won't stand for it is too, but to be able to recognize it when it's occurring is the most important thing. Um, in my career as a prosecutor, I have reviewed and read um, tens of thousands of police reports and I will tell you that it does happen. Um, and as my role um, of a prosecutor it is different than a defense attorney. A defense attorney's role is to find issues and, and to argue those issues. Stop. And as a prosecutor, we uh, institute <coughs> justice and make those tough decisions. Well, as both a defense attorney and a prosecutor, obviously I've seen instances of racial profiling in both of those positions. Uh, and as I, I think it's absolutely worth saying that I think it's detestable when I see it. Um, I remember one of the first cases I ever handled uh, on the felony, uh, felony case was probably back in 1999. Uh, it was a young man who was pulled over, he's African American, in the city of Livonia. Um, and I challenged the pretext of the stop. Uh, by virtue of the fact that I felt that there was no reason to have stopped this gentleman except for the fact that he was African American. Unfortunately, I lost that motion. Uh, but ever since that time, I've been very sensitive to the issue. Uh, and I think as a jurist, you have to be sensitive to the issue. And as some of the other uh, candidates have indicated, you have to be willing to uh, take that into consideration when you're hearing motions and evaluating uh, evidence in terms of, and being uh, willing to suppress that evidence if need be. Stop. Thank you. Kellyanne Ramsey for Third Circuit Court. Making a mean and hateful and cruel decision about an individual based on their race, their gender, their ethnicity, their sexual orientation is wrong. I was raised differently, my parents, taught me to treat each and every individual in my life with dignity and respect. I was taught not to look at the race of an individual. That is how I raise my child. That is how I conduct myself in my courtroom. And that's how I will continue to do so. Every single person deserves dignity and respect, everyone. And I believe that my 24 years has proven that to this community. Kellyanne Ramsey for Third Circuit Court. Yes. As far as uh, racial profiling is concerned, it's a very real thing. Uh, I don't, just a show of hands, has anyone else been pulled over for too much rust on the license plate? <laughs> just you, man? Just me and you, man? That's it? That's a very real thing. And just to kind of touch on, on what Mr. Evans talked about just a little bit. They didn't really care about rust on my license plate. They were trying to use the rust on the license plate to pull me over to see what else they can grow that stop into. Because rust on their license plate is not something cops kick, flick their lights on for. 
I think it's a very real thing. Uh, a judge, your next elected judge, needs to have an open mind when they're hearing the evidence and not be fearful about making that call on whether that evidence should be suppressed or not. And I think it's upon the legal community to also encourage any civil suits that should follow from this, because that civil suits will impact the training that the officers get. And I think it was candidate Fakano said that we can't change the attitude, but maybe we can change their behavior. Thank you. Jack Humphreys from Wayne County Circuit Court. Um, I have been stopped merely for the fact that I was black. Um, I lived within one mile of Dearborn, Michigan, and uh, my mom and dad, my father was a police officer, and my father and mom always told us, if you ever walk towards Dearborn and have to go around the Wyoming and Warren, make sure you take someone else with you. In addition, when you went into Fairlane Town Center, you were picked out, followed in the mall simply for the fact that you were black. I made a decision and I went to Dearborn as their assistant city attorney and I worked in the Dis Dearborn District Court and I helped change the attitude as well as the rules that were applied for, for us dealing with the citizens that came into Dearborn and it just wasn't black folks. It, there were Arab people that got treated just as bad and that you had to change the attitude. Humphreys for judge. substitute for police work, right? And the, the real issue with racial, racial profiling is that it just doesn't impact the person who's being profiled. It creates a chilling effect in our communities, in the judiciary, even with the police. It affects communities, it affects citizens, it affects our neighborhoods. There's a reason why black and brown communities across this nation are experiencing um, mass incarceration rates. There's a reason why 90% of all individuals facing felony charges are black and brown young men. And it, 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 it really, it really tears at the fabric of our community and our neighborhoods. Christine Longstreet for 36th District Court. Thank you, Alicia Taylor Coleman for 36th District Court Judge. As I said in, in my opening statement, morality cannot be legislated, but behavior can be regulated. I just like everyone else, uh, cannot stand, cannot understand how in this day and age, it is so live, not just well, but prevalent, a living, breathing beast that has not been stamped out. And that is because we have not had the courage to uphold the Constitution, uphold the, the laws for equality and respect for all. And where the officers or judiciary let it continue, we need to stand up and make a difference. Only way change is made is when you stand up and make a change. And that is, what I'm, that is why I'm becoming a judge. Because too many times, and I have been racial profiled, too many times my clients have come before the court and it's been disregarded. You know very well that a stop based on anything but race is wrong. And I'm gonna make a change. number of them. Uh, I started with one that I uh, started myself. Uh, it's called uh, one that uh, has given away uh, over uh, $100,000 in scholarships for uh, youngsters in Wayne County for the, uh, them and their education for them to immediately be able to uh, uh, start uh, college right after uh, high school with some of that help. Uh, a number of them, um, anywhere from uh, the uh, Engineering Society of uh, Detroit uh, that I still serve on the, uh, the board with, to a number of, uh, from gleaners to a number of uh, homeless uh, shelters, worked with a number of church organizations uh, where we've uh, gone through and uh, helped the community, especially when it's very cold or very hot, where we set up cooling centers as well as uh, particular uh, uh, warming centers in the, uh, uh, in the winter time. 
Uh, I could give you a whole list if you go to the website. Uh, you can find a number, over 32 years, have worked with a number of uh, nonprofit and uh, community organizations. Thank you, Michelle Eternal McAvoy for Wayne County Circuit Court Judge. Um, over the years, after I worked for the uh, Legal Aid Defender Association, I maintained a relationship with them by being on their low cost and pro bono list of attorneys who would represent clients who were not eligible for legal aid services. In addition, as a student, a college student, and that I was a volunteer with First Step, working in the shelter, working as a rape response advocate, when I became an attorney, I provided low cost and uh, pro bono legal services to victims of Very domestic sad. violence. Um, and now I uh, currently serve on the board of the uh, Referees Association of Michigan. I'm a member of the Women Lawyers Association of Michigan. I am a certified domestic relations mediator. Uh, I was on the, I was invited as only one of two parents to be on the student transition committee for Plymouth Canton Schools last year when they were forced to close two schools in our community. I've been extremely active in our school community. I'm very proud of public schools, and so I, I'm, I'm very active. Thank you. As an active member of the State Bar of Michigan, I've served on the Criminal Initiatives Group where I worked on collateral consequences of criminal um, convictions. I am a member of the Board of Directors for Matrix Human Services. I'm also a member of the Board of Directors of the Youth Connection. I am also a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. We're active in our community, and I am a member of Triumph Church. Kalilia Davis, the 36th District Court Judge. I'm a member of Messiah Baptist Church, um, and at my church, I have actually organized a seminar for probate and mental health um, to help people learn how to navigate the system there um, when they have mental health issues and also when they have someone who needs some probate assistance. I volunteered this year and last year with Miss um, Thomas's sorority, um, Delta Sigma Theta's expungement fair. And I was actually the only person in my race that volunteered either of those years to help with the expungement fair. I am also a member of the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, the Wayne County Criminal Defense Bar Association, the Black Women Lawyer Association of Michigan, and the, um, I'm sorry, and the Macomb County Bar Association. I am an alumni student recruiter for the University of Michigan, and I participate as sponsoring a student at the bridging the gap program that just started at CAS, where I sponsor a graduating senior to help get his college supplies. Thank you. Matthew Evans, I told you I was uh, president of the Wayne County Criminal Defense Bar Association for six years. Uh, I've also, on the, for the last 14 years, I've been on the Criminal Advocacy Program Board, and we put together programs for attorneys that want to take assigned cases in Wayne County. It's our annual program that we put together seminars, and I presented on various of those seminars. I've been a deacon at my church, uh, but the thing I'm most proud of is uh, a few years ago, one of my, I lost my oldest brother in Vietnam, and so one of my fraternity brothers who lost one of his good friends in Vietnam uh, decided that we needed to do something for veterans from uh, the Gulf War forward, and so we formed a, a charity called Help for Disabled Troops, and we put uh, raised money and built homes for uh, troops that suffered catastrophic combat injuries. Uh, last year we raised more than $100,000 and we built several homes around the state for uh, men and women who have suffered uh, catastrophic uh, combat injuries. And that's just a few of the things I'm involved in. So, Matthew Evans. Richard Bowers, candidate for 36th District Court. I'm a licensed uh, attorney in Michigan and the state of Tennessee. And I've been on the, the board neighborhood of every neighborhood association that I've ever lived in in the city of Detroit, uh, Palmer Woods, and then Green Acres uh, Woodward Civic Association. I've a been a volunteer for Matrix Human Services. I've organized uh, fundraisers for the Detroit Symphony Orchestra and been on the volunteer council board there, as well as uh, organized over the past 10 years fundraising for uh, the Michigan uh, the Opera House, Detroit Opera House, Michigan Opera Theater, as well as uh, the past year I have, which is a volunteer position, I've been, uh, I was appointed to the codification committee for the city of Detroit, which is a, a group of five or six people that are recodifying the entire Detroit city code, and we're just about finished. It hadn't been done since 1985, it wasn't done 
perfectly then. So for 2016, which will come out in 2017, we'll have a new city code. Thank you. Tracy Green for Third Circuit Court. I am a council member of the State Bar of Michigan's Children's Law Section. I am a board member of an organization called the Family Defense Attorneys of Michigan, which provides legal services to individuals who do not necessarily qualify for appointed counsel in child welfare cases. I am on the legal committee for an organization called Warrior Women Against Poverty, and we assist women who are recently um, women who recently left Cot Shelter as they're getting on their feet with the kinds of legal matters that c commonly confront people who have been homeless. I'm a member of Greater Christ Baptist Church where I sing in the choir. I've been a member there for 22 years. I'm also a past Girl Scout leader and I take the children in my neighborhood caroling every Christmas Eve <laughs> for as long as they will tolerate it in the cold. <laughs> Judge Lenise Bryan Weeks for Circuit Court, and I thank you for this question because my favorite quote, um, non-biblical, is that service is the rent we pay for the space we occupy, and that's what I live by. Being a judge is what I do. It is, it is my occupation, but the calling in life is to serve, and so to that vein, um, I am a member of Greater Emmanuel Institutional Church of God in Christ, where I am a licensed evangelist and I sit on the advisory board. I am the chair of the board for the last 10 years for Emmanuel Community Services, and I also am the founder and CEO of the nonprofit, The Esther Assignment, where we assist uh, women and families with all of their life needs when life has gotten them down. I am a board member of the Bruce Blanche, the Blanche Kelso Bruce Academy Alternative School. I am a member of the Board of Directors for the Southwest Detroit Community Justice Center and the Street Outreach Court Detroit. Rent is the price we pay for the space we occupy. Service is the price we pay. Thank you. Hello, Judge Wanda Evans from Wayne County Third Circuit Court. I have lent my time and service to the community for a number of years, but I've put on expansion workshops for the past um, 10 years. I've conducted workshops along with some of my colleagues on what to do if you stopped by the police. I am the founder of the About My Father's Business um, program that helps with expungement programs, um, educational, informational kind type of programs. I have this Christmas um, prepared dinner for the seniors in the Garden City area, and we cooked um, for them. Instead of giving the baskets, we gave baskets from, uh, that we received from the UAW to over five churches. I also assist with a youth group on the um, northeast side called Putting Youth First. They conduct their own business. I sit as an associate director and I help them with things like um, what to do when you're going for a job interview. And I also allow youth to come to my own courtroom and watch the process to give back. attorney, it's, it's very important that we give back and be involved in the community, especially as judicial candidates. I'm a member of the Family Law Bar Association, the Wayne County Bar Association, um, the Livonia Bar Association where I serve on the board there as the secretary, um, the uh, Society of Irish American Lawyers. I am a parish member at St. Michael's Church in the city of Livonia, and I also do pro bono legal work uh, for various organizations. First for um, First Step Domestic Violence Shelter in the city of Wayne, offering uh, legal advice to um, women in situations who also have family law um, dynamics um, adding, adding to their troubles. And also, um, I commenced and work on the Wayne Legal Aid Clinic where we provide pro bono legal services to um, the seniors in the city of Wayne. Oh, and then beyond that, I also uh, volunteer for the Family Advisory Board at St. Joe's uh, NICU in honor of my very preemie middle child. 
Well, my name is Brian Morrow again. Um, my community involvement has changed as my children have grown older. Uh, I was an Odyssey of the Mind uh, mentor when my son was young. Uh, when he went into the Boy Scouts, I became a Boy Scout leader until he became an Eagle Scout. Uh, and then just about that time, my daughter joined the Girl Scouts and uh, I became a Girl Scout leader uh, until my daughter decided to change directions. Uh, I think I was the only male uh, Girl Scout leader. Um, <laughs> then uh, I actually became a uh, uh, mentor for the uh, Junior Classical League, which uh, promotes the study of Latin and Greek, uh, and took my daughter to various conventions across the country. Uh, I then became involved in Habitat for Humanity, uh, Detroit. Uh, I participated in uh, that program through my church in Northville. And when I joined the prosecutor's office in 2006, I brought that program to the prosecutor's office and promoted it. And we do that every year uh, through the prosecutor's office. And I also have a scholarship that I offer through my family. Thank you, Kelly Ann Ramsey for Third Circuit Court. I too am a member of many bar associations in our community. However, as a child, I watched my father champion on behalf of American and Canadian Indians, so I guess the apple did not fall too far from the tree. It became very clear to me that our juvenile justice system and the Department of Health and Human Services could not do enough for our children who are neglected wards of a court. I have served for about 15 years as a board member at Vista Maria, Child's Hope, for about the last six or seven years, I've been on the board at Franklin Wright Settlement House here in Detroit. But what I am most proud of is my foundation. I am the co-founder of For the Seventh Generation. If you put all of those words together and spell them out correctly, for the seventh generation org, you would be most proud of my work. We just recently had a fundraiser and on Kelly Ann Ramsey for judge.org. There are two videos of that program that you can go to. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Christopher Blount for 36th District Court. Uh, you know, I could give you a long list of organizations that I'm a, I'm a dues paying member of the Wolverine Bar Association, the Wayne County Criminal Defense Bar Association, uh, the Charles Wright Museum, but no, we're going to skip to the ones that I'm intimate, intimately involved with, which realistically can't be more than two or three. One is the Isaiah Literacy Program that's based out of St. Timothy's Church on Puritan and Archdale. It was founded by Ms. Donella Hughes Bell, who's a retired police officer. She came to me, actually through my father, came to me, so I couldn't say no, came to me, <laughs> said that she wanted help forming her organization, and that was to supplement the educational needs of Detroit public school system, school system children in the summers when they're out of school. The second one is doing free forms, like uh, Judge Evans said, what to do when stopped by the police, know your gun rights, expungement forms. But my favorite one that I do is how to avoid probate court. Ladies and gentlemen, we talk a lot about controlling the economics in your community in the city of Detroit. You can't control the economics in your community if you can't control the economics in your home. And that's what avoiding probate court is all about. Thank you. Blount for Judge. James Humphreys for Wayne County City Court. Uh, I'm a member of Second Ebenezer uh, Church on uh, the east side of Detroit, and I serve as the trustee director of, of the trustee board. I also usher, and um, I was the I was the lead with my wife of the couples ministry for about ten years. Um, I have served in the, as a board member on a group called Prison Fellowship. Um, I have spent. Um, a lot of time coaching, um, as with Ms. Morrow, as my children grew, I got involved doing things. I spent a lot of time at the school, um, at the schools that my children were at, being the, the PTO, PTA president, um, LSEO president, et cetera, speaking at the schools, coaching basketball, football, and anything else that the kids were involved in, so I had a direct impact on the children at the right ages that they were. Um, and the last thing that I'm most proud of is that every Christmas, I do a random kindness thing. Thank you. Christine Longstreet for 36 District Court. Like most of the co my colleagues, um, I'm a member of many affinity, affinity bar associations, but um, the organization that I'm most proud of is the Black Women Lawyers Association. 
I like to tell people that I've been sitting in meetings every third Sunday of the month at 3 o'clock for 15 years. In that organization, I served as president, vice president, secretary, and correspondent secretary. But more importantly, uh, as president, along with Judge Te Deborah, Deborah Thomas, we started um, expungement programs. That was in 2008. And it was at that time that we recognized that there was a need in our community, that people um, were facing felony convictions, and they needed to have those removed. Um, in, in that organization, we have adopted alternatives for girls. I've served as a, a mentor. We've um, done food drives, Operation Good Cheer. Um, in addition to that, I'm a member of the Human Rights Commission, as I told you before, and I am a member of Triumph Church. I've been a member of Triumph Church. Christine Laundry for 36 District. <laughs> um, so, Alicia Taylor Coleman, and I'm, I'm glad you asked this because a big part of being a judge is being in the community. I have always volunteered, and one of the, the main things, and all of us, many of us at least with children, know how you get sucked in and you end up a coach or a, or a, a transporter or something with your kids. Well, I'm a mentor in Midnight Golf, and that's a program where we actually get in hands, feet, arms, and legs. Uh, twice a week, three hours a day, not from October to May, and then ten, um, seven days a, uh, a college tour where we take the youth in metropolitan Detroit and we give them the experience of going down and exposing them, giving the opportunities to get scholarship and know about the process to make a difference. So not just on the board, because I'm on, I was on several different boards and still am, uh, not just participating in the uh, legal uh, memberships, bar associations, but actual hands-on in the community every day. Alicia Taylor. Ron Robinson, candidate for the Third Judicial Circuit. As my colleagues have indicated, there, there are a lot of different associations that I'm involved with, but my passions are with uh, AFG, Attorneys for Girls, my wife and I. Uh, participate in that program to keep uh, at-risk girls off the street and provide them for housing and whatever support they need to be successful. That's, that's one of my passions. My other passion is our two mentoring programs, uh, primarily for African-American youth, in order to ad uh, address the achievement gap that is, that is uh, prevalent in our community, regardless of socioeconomic status, there's still that achievement gap. It has to be addressed, uh, and I'm very passionate about that. But other organizations, of course, the Wilbur Bar Association. I'm an active member at uh, Jesu Parish, but my sister school to get my Baptist side on is the Harper Memorial Baptist Church. So sometimes I go to Jesu, and then sometimes I gotta go get my, you know, I gotta get my, my, my soul on it, and I go to Harper Memorial Baptist Church. Um, that's, so thank you very much. Ron Robinson for serving for me. survivor and I'm the sister of a brother who's mentally ill and in that regard I had to fight to get my brother long-term mental health treatment so I understand what our community goes through I understand what it means to be a litigant on the other side of the V and just want to be heard I understand what it feels like when you're standing in front of the judge and that person has to make a decision that will impact your life or your siblings' lives. And they do it based on the law. And so I understand that a judge must be empathetic and connected to the community. And I am that person. The road to justice starts with Long Street. Thank you. James Humphrey, the Wayne County Circuit Court. Um, the most important thing that I want you to take away from this is that everything that's going to happen in a court is going to evolve around the families and the people that are in front of the judge. And that the people that are sitting 
as the judges, need to be connected to the community, need to be educated, need to be hardworking, need to be timely, need to know how to manage their, their docket, need to be able to see what it is that goes on as it relates to the people that come before them. Those are the skills and those are the traits that I will bring to the bench. James Humphreys, Wayne County Circuit Court. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Christopher Blount for judge of uh, 36th District Court. I'm just going to share with you one thing. I think it's important for your next judge or anyone who's elected to office to really be in touch with the reality of living in the city of Detroit. Now, I'm going to show my age. This is my 20th year of me being a high school graduate. As I said earlier, I stand before you as a three-time college graduate. But I want to let you know something. Somebody who I, used to, who I used to walk to Mumford High School with is being released in September from a 20-year sentence. Now, I'm on, on the outside, I may look like somebody who fits in with the prosperity of Midtown and Downtown, but I also know what it's like and know that my neighbors and my peers are also the people who have been left behind and need, may need some help from the government in moving forward. And I'm going to leave, with it, leave you with this. Lift as you climb. Too many people in this city have lifted me for me to not keep climbing and lifting at the same time. Christopher Blount for judge of 36th District Court. Make it count and vote for Blount. <laughs> Thank you again for having me, Kelly Ann Ramsey for Third Circuit Court. Ladies and gentlemen, we've already talked to you about our credentials and our work in the community. I have championed on behalf of members of our community and quite frankly for our children my whole life. I watched my parents do it and it was an expectation for me. I have proven that to you as a Wayne County prosecutor for six years. I spent my last three years there in the child abuse unit, did very high pro profile cases regarding sexual crimes against children and disabled adults, 24 years on the bench of the Wayne County Juvenile Court as a referee, and I uh, accepted a position this year with the Office of Attorney General handling our DNA rape cases. I can work tirelessly. I have proven that to you. My commitment to this community takes place during election year. I continue to have uh, lunch and dinner and attend church with Hattie Humphrey when it isn't a campaign year. And I thank you for your vote, Kelly Ann Ramsey. Well, I'll take this opportunity, a little bit of my one minute, to uh, again thank the League of Women Voters for putting on this forum. Uh, I was remiss in not doing that in my opening statement. Um, I would just indicate that, again, I would bring 30 years of experience to the bench if elected, if I were fortunate enough to be elected, not only as an environmental attorney, which was uh, the path of my first 12 to 13 years uh, as, a, as an attorney, uh, but also as a defense attorney and also as a prosecuting attorney. Uh, I'm very proud of, of one achievement, and that's the teen court program that I developed as a prosecutor, and that's a juvenile diversion, diversion program that we have in seven high schools in the city of Detroit right now. Uh, it's a very good program in terms of keeping kids without having records, getting them back on track, and I believe that that's a program, that's an innovative program, that you can extend not only to the juvenile division, but similar programs, treatment programs that we can take to the adult division uh, and that's what I'd like to do as a judge on the circuit court. Brian Morrow for circuit court. Melissa Cox, I just want to highlight that my legal experience is very deep. I practice in the areas of civil, criminal, and family law. Um, that's a unique experience with the judicial system that not everyone has. Uh, I am a criminal prosecutor, a criminal defender, and probably most importantly, a counselor to my clients of the most sensitive legal issues that face our court. Um, those uh, roles have given me a deep perspective and a, and a very clear understanding of the legal system and how the courtroom operates. Um, I've earned the endorsements of uh, many leaders in Wayne County, Kim Worthy, over 30 of the judges who sit right now um, and serve as our judges. Uh, the Arab American Association, uh, the police chiefs, the sheriffs, um, Council 25 AFSCME. Um, and so while I'll stand here today and ask for your support and also your vote, um, I'll ask you to do one more thing, and that's tell everybody you know to give some focus to our race, to educate themselves on the candidates, to know who they are looking at when they see the 21 list of names. So thank you. And hello, I'm Judge Wanda Evans. And when you vote for me on August 2nd, 
you get a judge that comes with experience, a judge that has a social work background, that has understanding of people, dynamics of families, the legal experience, I've worked in every area, I've been in the community. I am the judge that cares. I'm going to continue to serve you. Go to the polls on August 2nd. You can look at my Facebook page and my web page that will be up soon to know who I am and what I stand for. Integrity, fairness, and I am the people's judge. One that brings reasonableness, and I love the people. I'm get, again, I'm Judge Wanda Evans, Judge Wanda Evans for Wayne County Third Circuit Court. Look for your vote on August 2nd. Good evening and thank you again. Thank the League of Women Voters again for this time and this space. I am Judge Lenise Bryant Weeks and I'm asking for your vote on August the 2nd for Wayne County Third Circuit Court. I have a proven work ethic and a commitment to this community that goes beyond service on the bench. I believe in the integrity of the bench. I will never take your trust in me for granted. I believe that we have to make sure that those who come before us are treated fairly, that they have their matters heard, and that they um, believe that they have had a clear opportunity before the bench. We are losing four judges who had a, a number of years of experience. There are four vacancies being created on the circuit court, and I'm asking you to replace those judges with experience, with integrity, with fairness, and with someone who I don't have to learn the job. I know the job. I've been a judge for eight years, and I'm asking you to allow me to continue. Vote for Judge Lenise Bryant Weeks, Wayne County, Third Circuit Court. Thank you. Tracy Green for Third Circuit Court. I have been practicing law for 20 years, primarily in child welfare, criminal law, and family law. I am a twice published author in the field of family law, in child welfare in particular, and I am an award winning attorney. I was recognized by the Michigan Supreme Court for my work in child welfare as a parent's attorney. I received both of my degrees from Wayne State University, Bachelor of Social Work, and Law degree, and I attend a Cass Technical High School. You can learn more about my background at my website, www.gogreenforjustice.org. But what I'd like to sum up all of my qualifications as is what we learned when we were in elementary school. Leadership, scholarship, and citizenship is what we were graded on. I believe that I display all of the qualities of a judge, leadership, scholarship, and citizenship, and I'm asking for your vote on August 2nd. Thank you. I would like to again thank the League of Women Voters and the Detroit Public Library for hosting this tonight. It's been a, a wonderful evening. My name is Richard Bowers. I'm a candidate for 36th District Court. Um, we've said many things tonight. One thing I'd like to say is that I am a Detroiter in every sense of the word. I've been in every neighborhood, in every organized community meeting in the entire city several times over the past 10 years. And I love the city of Detroit and its people. 36. And I will be a fresh, fair, and focused face on the 36th District Court. Richard Bowers, vote better with Bowers. Thank you. Uh, Matthew Evans, uh, I wish I had something flashy to say. I'm just not a pretty face or something along those lines. But uh, going back, I talked about my experience. I've been a criminal defense attorney for 20 years. And I'm known across the state. I've done training seminars for attorneys. I uh, testified in front of the legislature on things. The first endorsement I got was from the Police Officers Association of Michigan. And when I asked them, they said they never remember ever endorsing somebody with my background. And one of the guys says, Matt, he says, you've given us FIP for 20 years. He says, but, he says, we, you have always acted ethically, you've always acted fairly, and we would have no problem with you hearing cases in the criminal division. And when someone that you've been on the opposite side of the table for, for 20 years, is willing to endorse you, I think it speaks much of my character and why you know that you're going to have a fair and decent judge. Matthew Evans. Mr. Davis. Kalilia Davis for 36th District Court Judge. 
I don't think that you've heard anyone in my race say that they have a more varied experience practicing law than I do. Um, and certainly, you haven't heard anyone other than one other person say that they have experience practicing at 36th District Court. And that's what this comes down to, is you want to elect someone at 36th District Court who knows how the court works and how to handle the docket. That person is me. I ask, thank you very much. I ask that you vote for me on August the 2nd, that you vote only for me um, so that you don't split your vote. And um, again, it's Kalilia Davis. Please consider that if you take, if your car breaks down, you do not want to take it to someone who read about how to fix your car. You want to take it to somebody who has experience handling your car. And that's me in this race. I'm a person with experience handling docket at 36th District Court. Thank you. Ms. Thomas. Good evening. My name is Regina Thomas, and I am a candidate for one of the four open seats on Wayne County Circuit Court. After practicing law for 20 years, I've served uh, as a prosecutor. I've done defense work. I've done criminal work and I've done civil work. I've identified um, that judges impact our everyday life. I am asking for the privilege to serve you as one of the next Wayne County Circuit Court judges. I'm also asking you to go to my website, reginathomasforjudge.com, to see my plan to provide fair, balanced access to justice. On August 2nd, flip the ballot over, vote the judges first, and look for Regina Thomas for Wayne County Third Circuit Court Judge. Good evening, Michelle Eternal McAvoy for Wayne County Circuit Court Judge. I am respected, I am experienced, and I am dedicated both to the court and to this community. I am a 17-year-old seasoned attorney. I have a significant amount of trial experience. The court trusted me enough to appoint me to my current position as referee based on my experience and my knowledge in the field. The Detroit Metropolitan Bar Association trusted me enough to rate me as well qualified for my position. I've been endorsed by the AFL-CIO, the Michigan Bricklayers, the uh, and Allied uh, Craft Workers, and the Michigan Building and Construction Trades, among with many other organizations. I will clarify one thing: there will be one civil seat and three criminal seats open at the end of this at the end of this year. However, I know from experience on the family law bench: in five years, four family law judges have left family law to take seats in, in criminal and in civil law. So what the bench looks like in December may not be anything like what the bench looks like in January. Make sure you elect people who have experience in all areas like myself. Michelle Eternal McAvoy, thank you. Thank you. Uh, one of the important traits too, and it hasn't come up, I think, for a judge is uh, to be humble. Uh, not to have an arrogance from the bench and to uh, make sure that there's fairness in the courtroom. That humbleness has come to me many times uh, through many of my associations and really through my family background. Uh, my grandfather uh, was very, very active in the UAW, was at the Battle of the Overpass. And one of the things about humbleness, though, was taught to me by a story that uh, he and I uh, encountered was uh, with him. He used to work at the Ford Foundry. Uh, and working there, his hands used to become discolor uh, discolored. So one day when he came home, I said, Grandpa, you know, I'm going to do what you do. He was very calm about that. And he says, there's nothing wrong with what I do, but my hands are discolored so that yours don't have to be and I want you to carry on, but that means there's an obligation. If you're gonna to go to college, there's gonna be public service that's attached to it. I've had 32 years of public service. Serving on the bench is also part of public service and doing it in a humble way. I appreciate one of your votes. Come on a second. Thank you. Mr. Robinson. Ron Robinson, a candidate for Third Judicial Circuit. I've been an attorney for almost 33 years. I started in the Civil Rights Division as a staff attorney. So I started at the bottom. Uh, there were eight lawyers in that division. Uh, fast forward to 2006, guess how many lawyers in the Civil Rights and Civil Liberties Division? And they were responsible for the entire state. One, you're looking at it. Uh, but that didn't, that didn't deter me, the fact that I was the only attorney in charge of the entire state enforcing the two-state civil rights statute. Because I worked hard. <laughs> Nobody worked harder than me. Uh, I, whether I went against large law firms, it didn't matter. I'm currently now the division uh, chief of the Civil Rights Division. I'm also the Attorney General's director of his Detroit office, so I've administrative oversight for uh, 100 lawyers and 50 support staff. I've served as the director of the Detroit office under four administrations, hired by Frank J. Kelly, uh, under Granholm, under Cox, and now under uh, Bill Schuette. So 
I have the, the no qualities to be a great judge, and I want your support on August the 2nd. Thank you very much. Ms. Coleman. Thank you. Last but not least, Delisha Taylor Coleman. And I want to thank you all for coming out, getting experience, but also passing on this knowledge that you obtained tonight. Um, I'm running not for prestige or power or privilege, not for a pension or any of that. I'm running as a public servant. I'm one of the individuals that currently practice in circuit court every day. And I've practiced there both as a prosecutor and as a defense attorney uh, in family law, as a plaintiff and a defense attorney, and civil as a plaintiff and defense attorney. I bring over 21 years experience to that bench, being fair and impartial, bringing justice. Um, you cannot change the heart you cannot change someone's heart, but you can control the heartless. Uh, Delisha Taylor Coleman for Third Circuit Court, making a difference with justice, integrity, respect, and fairness. Thank you for your vote. We'd like to thank all of the candidates for coming out tonight and expressing uh, their point of view and uh, letting us get to know them. definitely appreciate you taking time to uh, let the community get to know you and uh, we look forward to uh, working with you in the future. Uh, we wish to thank the Detroit Public Library for use of this wonderful facility and for all of our uh, forum officials and citizens for participating. Uh, we also would like to thank all of you for your uh, commitment to public service. We want to remind everyone that the primary is Tuesday, August 2nd. The polls open at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. If you need assistance voting, you please contact your city clerk. We do have, the league has a website, vote411.org, which has information. Hopefully all of the candidates submitted information so that their um, information is housed in our vote411 uh, website. Uh, we do want to thank everyone for coming out, and um, good night. Okay, you too, all right?